I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Now I want you to release your faith as we do this. Jesus have clearly told us when he told his disciples, they asked him to teach us how to pray. And in one of the strong things he said, he said, ask God, give us this day our daily bread. Now, don't let anybody play down on that prayer. Don't let anybody play down on that statement. Don't let anybody try to cheat you through their philosophy. <laughs> God. Yeah, Paul said, be well as any man cheat you through philosophy. Now, when he says philosophy, you know, his, his, his way of reasoning and thinking. Don't let anyone cheat you out of the blessing of God by bringing Rema and Revelation. Hey, the principles of God are so simple. They are just a demonstration of his love for you. Praise God. That's all. That's what it is. Praise God. So any revelation that will take you from obeying his command, every revelation that will take you from walking in his ways, walking in righteousness, believing and receiving from God, trust me, they are cheating you with philosophy. So believe right now as we make this demand. It's a simple demand, praise God. Join me and say this, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It is coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You know, some believers don't just know how to receive from God. Their hearts are not open. There are believers who just feel, look, I can't get any money except money I work for. It's good to work. It's good to to be productive. God wants us to be productive. Every, you can't work with God and not be productive. It's impossible. But beyond that, God, we, we don't labor so that we can eat. Someone says, oh, Paul says, anyone who does not work, let him not eat. You know, you know sometimes people... You, you always miss the point. P Peter said it. Peter said it. See, you always miss the point. You don't get the whole bundle of truth that, that, that someone is communicating. You just take things out of context. So Paul said, anyone who does not work, let him not eat. The, the question then is, who's feeding them? You can only make that law if you are the one feeding he didn't say, anyone who does not work, nobody should give him anything. He said, anyone who does not work, let him not eat. That tells you he was referring to a specific group of people that are meant to be doing a specific kind of job. It's like saying, anyone who's not working should not earn any salary. You can't just come and say it publicly. You can't stop a father from giving his child food. <laughs> or, or you can't stop a child from giving his a father from giving his child money and say, oh, you don't have a job, so I cannot give. You can't stop that. You can only say that in a particular organization where everybody in that organization is working towards a certain purpose. And then some people are just being lazy, not working. You understand what I'm saying? So, but they want to live off, they, they want to earn a salary, but they are not doing it, they are lazy, they don't want to work. So you can only give that kind of command to a specific organization. Anybody who doesn't work in this organization should not be paid. You can't make that a general um, command. It won't work, praise God. So Paul was speaking specifically to people who were depending on the church because they had, they had um, you know, then they had this community of believers. They all live together. They all do stuff together. So now everybody's supposed to be useful. People give things to the church and the church redistributes. You know, you, know, you remember that's why elders were, uh, um, deacons were anointed to serve tables. You remember the story now? Now, because they, they, they had that community going on. He wasn't saying anybody who's not working, 
should not feed. So if you, if you don't have a job, don't feed. No, he was referring to the pastors. Anyone who's lazy in the congregation should not feed from the portion that people get from the church. It's like when Paul was talking to Timothy about widows. He began to tell him, look, don't take in a widow that is of this age or of this kind of... So what was he saying? He wasn't speaking to every widow. He was talking about you. Timothy was talking to Timothy, who was a pastor, who had widows under his church that the church was taking care of. You see that now? So he was telling him, look, the kind of widows you should take under custody, you know when I mean custody, under the church care. And then that's when he told him that, look, if the widow has people who are capable, don't take that kind of person under your care. Let the family take care of that person. You see that? So it was say he was referring to people who were depending on the church. And the work he was talking about is the work within the church. I, 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 need, I needed it to understand that. Praise God. Now, because generally, God takes responsibility for his children. I've shown you that scripture many times. God takes care of his beloved even when they sleep. Now, the reason I share this is not so that you start thinking, oh, so I, I, I just want to be sleeping. No, I'm telling you, look, turn your heart to do the real work. Turn your attention to do the real work. Don't get into labor because you're looking for what to eat. No. Your father takes the responsibility of feeding you. That's why Jesus said, take no thought for your life. Say, what will I eat? Now think about it. Jesus gave a command, take no thought for your life. Saying, what will I eat? And, and then you take thought by actually saying. So when you begin to say, um, so how will I feed then? So when someone says, oh, come and say, I can't do that. Why? If, if I do that, how will I feed then? What are you doing? You're taking thoughts. It's about the decisions you make. Jesus said, don't do it. See that now? So, when Jesus told us, ask God for your daily bread, he was deliberate about it because your daily bread comes from your father. You remember Jesus said, consider the birds. Now, those were deliberate statements he made. He said, consider the birds of the air. They don't sow, they don't reap. Praise God. He said, but your father takes good care of them. And then he said a very powerful statement. He said, are you not worth more than them? What was the essence of that teaching? You have never sat down to think about it. There are things you read in scripture that will, that will inspire strength in you for truth. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So we are talking about being a witness. And by the way, a miracle is happening in your life today. There is a supply miracle coming your way today. Open your heart and receive it. I mean, receive it. Just receive it. Because sometimes the condition of your heart blocks your receiving. Oh, yes. You remember the, 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 the man who, who brought his child to the disciples to cast out the devil? And the, devil, the, the disciples couldn't cast the devil out. So when Jesus was done casting the devil out, they went to him and said, why couldn't we cast him out? And Jesus said, because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief. They tried. They did. But it didn't work. And Jesus said, because of your unbelief. They had learned how it would not work. The same thing with your finances. The same thing with God meeting your needs. Why is it not working? Your unbelief. Your unbelief. But I believe. You really? Really? Should we talk about believing now? Praise God. Listen, to believe doesn't mean monster strength. I, mm, mm, 
I'm going to believe God this week. This week, I'm going to believe. No, to believe simply just means taking what someone said for what it is. Adjusting your heart to say, I accept what this person said as truth. And guess what's going to start happening? You, your actions are going to flow in the line of your belief. Your thoughts, your decisions, your actions are going to flow in the, in the line of your belief. So Jesus said, take no thought for your life and you believe him. So how, what kind of actions are you going to take? What kind of decisions are you going to make? You find out that your decisions are in line. So now I want to do something. I'm thinking, but I don't have the money for it. Where am I going to get the money? Hey, but Jesus said I should take no thoughts. So what should I do? Seek the kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to me. Mm. Okay. So what do I do? How do I seek his kingdom? You remember yesterday I shared with you, Jesus said, I am meek and lowly in heart. That's the character from which he wants us to view things. For. Meekness and lowliness of heart. How do we witness him with these characters? And what does it mean to witness him? I told you to witness him. It means to be the proof that Jesus was real and is real because he's still alive. He's not dead and gone. No, Jesus is still. That's one thing you must come to terms with. Jesus is still alive. So alive that he can walk into your room today. <laughs> and he didn't come from the dead. <laughs> no, he did it. He's so alive. That he can be standing. No, and, and, and don't start looking for a white bearded, long hair guy with a with, with, with a with a robe. Uh uh. Sometimes you just want to wonder how many times Jesus has appeared to people. And guess what? He doesn't come, I am Jesus, I am Jesus. Can't you recognize me? I'm Jesus. No, first and foremost, he doesn't come to everyone. No, he doesn't come to everyone. I remember talking to the Lord one time. You know, I said, but, but Lord, you missed a big opportunity. I <laughs> you I was talking to him. I said, you missed a big opportunity. He said, what are you talking about? I said, when you, when you rose from the dead, man, you should have waited until CNN has been, you know, has, has come into full play. You should have waited until all the cable network. I mean, you should have waited for this generation of social media. Man, I mean, think about it. Just think about it. You, you die, they bury you, and, and you know, because you said in, in three days time, you rise from the dead. So every camera, every news network will just be by the grave, you know, for those three days. Just think about it. Helicopters hovering around with their cameramen, drones, you know, monitoring this guy. Let's see how this guy is going to rise. I'm, I'm telling you, the whole world will be on standstill. And then on that third day, like Kuma Shaigada, Helek Oporote, everybody sees the glory of God descend on that place. The soldiers who are guarding the place fall down, nobody touching them. And then they see the stone rolling up. And Jesus walks out of that grave. Oh dear Lord, think about it. I was, I'm telling you, I was telling you, I said, Lord, you missed a big opportunity. Oh, come on. And then the Lord said something to me. He said, no. He says, the plan is not to show myself to everyone. The plan is to reveal myself to those who believe in me. Now I began to understand. Because sometimes, like, why didn't Jesus, I mean, he, why didn't he just show up in Pilate's, Pilate's house, you know? Why didn't he show up in Caiaphas, the high priest? Why didn't you say, high priest, chief high priest, I'm alive, oh. Those soldiers that flogged him. No, oh, no, man. I mean, hey. Hey. 
the one that took that spear and thrust his side. I wonder how that guy slept that night. <laughs> so imagine Jesus showing up in his room at 12 midnight. Hey, how are you? Praise <laughs> God. That's scary, right? <laughs> Praise God. But, but you just want to want. But, but then the truth is, he didn't even bother. That's never his focus. He only went to those who can hear him. Because that's how they're going to walk. Showing yourself to every. You know, that's, that's the mistake we do even today. We just want to let everybody see that we are anointed. We want to let everybody see that we are so powerful. And then at the end of the day, the same people who shout, who hail you, are the same people tomorrow who say crucify him. That's just the truth. Because not everyone who gathers around you, even when they see miracles, Jesus, Jesus gave them bread to eat. And by the next meeting, they gathered, I mean, they had to take boats across. And they all gathered. And Jesus said to them, you are gathered, not because of the miracle, but because you ate and you were full. But they ate miracle bread. And Jesus is saying, it's not because of the miracle that you are here. It's because you ate food and you are full. It's the same way people just, sang, uh, people just satisfy their fantasies. Oh, I like that. Ah, I like that church. Oh, things used to happen in that place. So that's all they come from. That's all. They just come to hear one new story. They just come to hear, ah, somebody, ah, one guy, 10 people got up from the wheelchair. Not because they believe, but because we were there when it happened. It's the same nature with man today. Because these same people are the same people at the end of the day, when, when something comes and say, we said it, we knew it. We knew that miracle that man was doing was not normal. We knew. He, he, I mean, no, no, you think about it. I think we didn't know. We're just going there watching. It's the same people. So Jesus never bothered himself with the crowd. He was concerned about those who will receive him. Those are the ones he was bothered about. Those are the ones he cared to reveal himself to. Praise God. And it's the same thing now. When he says we shall be witnesses of him, I want you to tell, I want you to understand this. There are people who will think you are um, you are useless. There are people who will think um, you are you are too calm, you are too quiet, you are too uh-uh. Uh, 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 uh. I can't be that kind of a person. You heard people talking. I, 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 I can't be that kind of a person. No, 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 no way. Praise <laughs> God. But listen, there is power in those attributes of Jesus. Because you see, their weakness or his weakness and the witnesses, his weakness now, and the seemingly weakness of those witnesses carries uh, um, there is a power that it carries and and also they are not showing weakness willingly the weakness you see or perceive is a work of the holy spirit in them i don't like that kind of holy spirit that will make me weak huh? you don't understand the power of that seemingly weakness. You don't understand it. That's why you will reject it. That's why you think, I mean, come on. I mean, ah, no, 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 nobody can. Ah, nobody can talk to me like that. No way. I mean, Jesus is always like, you I told you that. Never me. Nah, maybe Jesus knew the kind of who he was talking to. Hey, you don't know the power of God. You don't know the power of God. If you do, you will understand the message. Jesus told the Jews, say you err because you don't know the scripture, not the power of God. They don't know the power. Of God. Many people don't know the power of God. And that's why they fight. That's why they argue. That's why they try to ah, No, They don't know the power of God. If you know the power of God, your attitude will be different. 
and my time is up. Praise <laughs> God. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Let your character be formed in us. Let your character be formed in us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.